Hello, I'm Bob Fredo, and I'm happy to be hosting today's program on sportsmanship and character development. And I'm representing the Peters Township Character Counts Initiative, which is a broad-based community effort to coordinate many activities that will help to enhance character development in our community. Happy to say that we have a number of community groups who are working hand-in-hand -hand for this effort, including the school district, the municipality, the Chamber of Commerce, Rotary, the PTAs, and many other groups, including the Peters Township Ministerium. Today's program will include a few panelists, and I'm happy to introduce them today as well. We have Rich Relic, our athletic director at the high school, Grant Burkhart, senior, PTHS, and also a welcome, and thank you for joining us today. I'd like to start off with the head administrator for the sports and activities programs here, Mr. Relic. Uh, be helpful if you senior Jen Doran to start us off by discussing your vision and philosophy for the interscholastic, interscholastic program well I, I think one of the things we try to do here at, at Peters Township in our school district is make sure that uh, that our activities support the academic mission of the of the schools and whether it be our strategic plan or the goals and missions we have for our school district we hope they coincide with what we do athletically um, we think, uh, from the athletic administration perspective, that activities are inherently educational. And I think that's important because I think there's a wide variety of difference between, um, let's say, uh, non-school sports and sports that are done through AAU programs or pay for play or perhaps a uh, different type of mission and development for those programs than what we have here at school. And also, we feel that the activities and participation in such activities really foster success for kids later in life, not just in athletics. So that's one thing I think we're very proud of here, uh, Dr. Fredo, is that our goals, our mission, our strategic plan uh, dovetails or is coincidental with what we do in the district. I'd just like to comment that uh, some people may remember that I worked at the high school a number of years ago and been involved with character counts for a number of years. And uh, I'd like to say that it's just great that this is something that we can continue to build upon. I know you're still relatively new here and you've already taken some steps and you're very respectful of what's been done in the past uh, with Mr. Mays being the administrator, Dr. Hages being the former principal, Mr. Englert, and many other people have contributed to this, including the past coaches. So really have a great opportunity to uh, build upon what has already been done in this area. That's, it's important what the adults think and uh, we like to think we might have something to do with any good things that go on, but it's really important to know what the student athletes are really participating in the recipients of our administration and coaching, uh, what they think. So uh, Jen and Grant would like for you to tell us a little bit about maybe some of the things that have really had the most impact on your character development, just positive things that have occurred that you feel have shaped uh, your, your personality makeup, the things that you believe in, and helped you to be successful, because I know both of you have had a lot of success, too, mm -hmm. in terms of winning. Yeah. Um, probably for me, it's been my parents and coaches. They just always pushed me to, like, whenever I'm playing, to give respect to the refs, other teammates, the people we're playing against, because you're, like, not only representing yourself, but the school and the people that you play for. So by playing well and being good sportsmanship to other people, you're just really representing yourself and the school and the people who work for the school. Yeah, and kind of like what she goes along with there is that you can't really underestimate how much the parents and the coaches have that input into what their team and their players mm -hmm. and who they're trying to coach, um, how much they, they need to respect everybody that's working to make the game exactly what mm -hmm. it should be. That's a big, that's a pretty big deal in high school sports. Yeah. Have you ever had any, some times that where it's been really challenging to mm -hmm. really live up to those mm -hmm. ideals that uh, you know you have in your heart and you know mm -hmm. that your coaches and parents want you to live up no, to? I think I'd be lying if I said yeah. I didn't. But Especially big mm -hmm. rival teams. Yeah. Like yes. You want to get out there, you want to play, you want to win, but you still have to keep your cool and know that mm -hmm. you can't just go out there and beat people up while you're playing. <laughs> like You have to like know the rules and know what you're doing. It's a little easier when things are going well yeah exactly. and you're celebrating the victory mm -hmm. accepting defeat is, is part of that too yeah. mm. you had some experiences where you maybe handled some things a little differently mm -hmm. you know, looking back on it yeah that's a big thing too is if you can keep your cool when you're winning as much as you can when you're losing mm -hmm. that's 
the even the even temperaments it's very very good well i can tell you for sure that that trait and that skill will uh, really serve you well as you go through because through life we certainly face a lot of disappointments and some things are very important to us mm -hmm. too so keeping your poise under pressure in an emotionally charged environment is absolutely yeah. cr critical mm -hmm. i think from from what you were saying i, I what I was interpreting from what you're saying is that the uh, the need for positive role modeling from mm -hmm. adults shouldn't be something that we take for granted as adults, whether we're the parents or we are rec coaches or mm -hmm. we're interscholastic coaches or teachers, whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big thing because as, especially when you're coming up through the grades in fourth grade to eighth grade before we get into high school sports, you don't really have anybody else to look up to besides your parents and your coaches. Mm -hmm. So. The, the value that, that, we, that we stress on, on parents and coaches being positive role models for, for us as, as young athletes, I guess, is, is, a, is a very big thing. And I think mm -hmm. they do a pretty good job. And uh, Rich, as a sports program administrator, you are in charge of administering the programs, but also selecting and supervising coaches. And let's face it, things can get pretty competitive and uh, winning is important. That's part of what we're trying to do to have success. Um, what kind of struggles do you see that some of the coaches might have in terms of balancing that desire to win and also making sure that we're keeping the best interest of everyone at heart in, in the competitive environment? I think that maybe is what separates us as an educationally founded sports program from the others I mentioned. I think we are very interested in our students' total development, not just the win-loss uh, success ratio, which Kids, kids will be honest with you. They, they do want to win, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I also think that if you look closely at some of the documentation that's out there, you'll also find, though, that students who participate in extracurriculars, not sports alone, but you know, I point to the athletic end because that's what I deal with, uh, usually have a higher grade point average than students that aren't participating and even have a, a lesser uh, absentee record. They're in school more and they're wanting to learn and I think that's probably if you have a good coach in place supporting that, I think they're checking the kids grades in season. They're also not just attendance at practices but they want to know if those kids would be in school because we have some governing bodies that have restrictions as to uh, if you have a, a lot of absentees, uh, absenteeism I should say, they, they definitely will not be able to participate in the sport. And luckily, even in academics here in our school, if a student ends up with uh, you know, below average grades, whether they be a, a D or a failing grade, uh, we ensure that they're in our SHARP program. And I think those things go hand in hand with why you see documentation that those athletes, again, have higher grade point averages when they're participating and have a less absentee rate. So uh, you're correct, though. Coaching's important. You need to get kind of the kind of people when we look for a coach that support our goals and ideals. Mm -hmm. Just in, in terms of uh, carrying through with this discussion uh, and your performance on the field, sometimes I think we as adults forget about the pressure that our student athletes are under mm -hmm. and, and might be feeling uh, because sometimes we put our own perceptions on things and assume that that's how the student athletes feel. It might be the same as teachers with students in the classroom as well. Do you feel a lot of pressure to perform in terms of having success in terms of wins or losses or individual performances? Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's always a big pressure to win. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as you move along through the grades and, and through the levels of sport, whatever sport you're interested in, I think it, it becomes more of a pressure. And if you can, if you can balance an, an even temperament with the pressure to win, I think it, it'll go a long mm -hmm. way. Like, we're the reigning champs from last year for Whippeal, and, like, there's a lot riding on our shoulders this year to win again, but you just can't let it get to you. Like, you have to play your season, and you have to keep doing well, like, throughout your season in order to get there. Like, we're not there yet, but we still have to keep playing hard in order to get there. So, so when you're the champs, there's only one way to go, right? Exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. But hopefully you're still having fun playing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because right? there course. certainly is pressure. And speaking of character development, there's going to be pressure. There's going to be pressure mm -hmm. when you go to college mm -hmm. and you're out in the world working with being a family member and so forth. So, mm -hmm. again, one of the great positive things about participating in sports, and I like what you said too, Rich, in terms of just activities in general, that involvement with other people, being part mm -hmm. of a team, all goes hands and all, all goes mm -hmm. hands in hand. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the specific uh, programs that you have in place and are, are working towards 
sure. implementing at this point. One of the things, and I think if I'm memory's correct, Jen was part of the student athlete group is last May, we assembled a group of approximately 10 to 12 student athletes, uh, coaches, and also parents, mm -hmm. and asked them a little bit about our program. What are we doing right? What can we become better at? Uh, is, are we providing the, the needs to the stakeholders of our community in the way of our interscholastic athletic program? What was kind of neat is that uh, there was a person actually that facilitated the group named Dr. Amy Kimball. <clears throat> she is actually uh, a sports psychologist from the UPMC headquarters on the south side. She's known all over the country. I think she's a graduate of the University of Tennessee with her doctorate in sports psychology from Tennessee, and she led that facilitation of the questions. I have no idea other than the fact that I assembled the room, put some drinks and a few snacks in there, and then actually made haste and got out of there so that the people felt that they had an open door to talk about what they needed to. The best part about the whole particular, uh, it was called at that time, uh, the status of scholastic sport, this study that she was starting to put together. They've since uh, crystallized those questions and what's neat about it is whether you're again a parent, student athlete, or coach, uh, by at your own convenience you can go onto a website called www.psada.org and now take the survey which again we were part of the component to put that together uh, the questions that made the survey we were one of 12 schools in the commonwealth and we would encourage our stakeholders our community people to go onto that website click into whether they're a parent coach or uh, student athlete and take that survey mm -hmm. it's going to tell us a lot more about what's uh, ingredient what service we're providing and are we meeting the needs of our high school athletes sounds like that might be something of interest in our community could you say that website again maybe we can get it sure. put on the screen for the community it is www.psadaposada.org and i think there's a link immediately to take the survey whether you're one of those three groups Trust that it's very short, right? It is. It takes, I think, less than 20 minutes to do. Good, good. It's valuable input. You mentioned, too, how many different groups were sponsoring that initiative? Right. They're all the professional educational associations from the state of Pennsylvania, starting with the Pennsylvania Department of Education, which are printing the uh, final copy when it's done next August, as well as the PSBA, the School Board Association, the PASA, the Superintendents Group, and correct me, uh, Dr. Fred, if I'm wrong, the Principals Association, I think now it's elementary too, P-A-E-S-S-P, -S are part of that, P-I-A-A, -A, and the Posada, which is the State Athletic Director's Group. So six educational professional groups are promoting this particular project. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This time we'd like to take a minute break and pause for uh, a little bit of a break, and then we will return to you with more sports and character development in Peters Township. What a day! Started with the call from the factory in town. There had been a chemical I spill, throw a and a number of the employees had been thought would be important. This mom called because her two-year-old got into some old blue pills, and she was scared. And then I got a snake bite call from the emergency room. Supplied anti-venom. I made sure that everybody got out into the fresh air, and then I told them what to watch for. She calmed down when she heard me speak in Spanish. I told her that her little one would be okay. I explained how to use the new antidote. The patient is feeling much better. They called quickly and everyone was fine. I called back to see how both of them were. She was so grateful. I was glad to teach them something new. Experts at your local poison control center are ready to give you free, confidential expert advice 24-7. Call 1-800-222-1222. Chronic pain is one of America's most urgent and ignored health issues. Billions of dollars on medical diseases and con each year we spend missions. But while we wait for cures, people are research for painful, still suffering, quietly, secretly, terribly. It's time for relief. That's why Congress has declared this the Decade of Pain Control and Research. To learn more, visit decadeofpain.org.
e-file. Get receipt confirmation and a quicker refund. Log on or tell your tax preparer to e-file for you and join the 53 million e-filers who consider it done. Welcome back to Sportsmanship and Character Development in Peters Township. And we also have welcomed the new guest to our panel today. We have Michelle Harmel, the Director of the Recreation Department in Peters Township. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. It's a good opportunity for you to tell us a little bit about some of the training programs that you've been able to institute in Peters Township through the Rec Department that help to promote these ideals. Well, the Peter Sancho Parks and Recreation Board has instituted a program called YES, the Youth Exemplifying Sportsmanship. And um, through that, we try to encourage our youth sports associations to encourage parents and coaches to have positive sportsmanship and to pass on good um, role model behaviors to the children participating in sports. Um, we have literature that we pass out to the sport associations, um, such as handbooks. We have a parent's handbook and a coach's handbook that we can provide to the associations to help um, give them guidelines for positive coaching and sportsmanship. We also have like little things like this that we can hand out to the parents we pass out through the um, uh, recreation center. And um, we also have workshops that we've provided through the township for the sports association coaches to participate. We've done so by um, obtaining grant monies and funding from outside organizations and then we can provide these workshops to the coaches at no cost and um, we just had one last November we had 33 of our youth sports coaches in participation um, we had a speaker from the Positive Coaching Alliance along with somebody from the UPMC it was a um, PhD that came out and spoke about sportsmanship sounds excellent That's good. sounds like a nice turnout for that program it was very good well, I've been on the receiving end of those programs. I've been in two of the training programs over the past several years, starting back uh, a number of years ago. And uh, I've also noticed how some of this philosophy has been filtered through the system when we get our uh, sign-ups for the recreational sports, oftentimes get a, a pledge that parents have to make to recognize their role as good role models and to make a pledge to do everything they can to be a positive influence on our youth. We I think that alone is a is a very positive step. It just mm -hmm. makes you stop and think. And the other thing I found that's useful is that uh, in working with other parents who are coaches, uh, we tend to try to help each other then as we get a little bit maybe uh, too into the games for uh, the sake of winning and losing. Sometimes we remember there are uh, young children on the other end of our coaching and make sure that we keep that in mind and Absolutely. understand the purpose we're serving too. So. Thank you for your efforts in that area. I know it's doing a lot of good in our community. Well, again, we talk about the things that we as adults think are important, but really want to hear from Grant and Jen in terms of uh, what suggestions you might have for <coughs> all of us as uh, program administrators, parents, rec directors, et cetera, in terms of the kind of things that you think would be really useful for us to continue to do, do more of or do less of. I know what Mr. Ellick was talking about um, before the commercial was sports psychology and it might be something that maybe not you don't think about at the at the first set that you that you have problems in sports but I, I pulled myself out of a pretty big slump I'm a golfer that's what I do so uh, I, I read a book by Dr. Bob Rotella and he's a sports psychologist for golf um, and it's it's really helped as far as keeping myself in control mentally on the course and and that is a big thing with sports is the mental side of it. I mean, for me as a golfer, I look up to Tiger Woods because I, I think that he's the most mentally strong athlete that there is that plays sports, not just golf, but sports in general at this point. And so I, I think sports psychology is a big thing. If we could implement that somewhere as, as, far, as far as getting it into the middle school, into the high school age. Mm -hmm. as, far, as far as that um, forum that we had back last year, I don't know what the parents and coaches had to say, but it was just a really good way for all the athletes to like give suggestions to what was her name? I don't remember. Amy. King. Amy, um, just like telling her how we feel about like coaching wise and um, other things that can be done to help promote our school sports better. And 
I think that was a really good way just to have everyone like say how they feel without any pressure from other people being there as far as coaches and stuff. So. And we had talked about looking up to role models, mm -hmm. um, especially through the through the grade school uh, days. When I remember when I played basketball in fourth, fifth, sixth grade, I went to a bunch of camps that were run by Rick Bell, who used to be the basketball coach here. And I thought that was really, really good because you're looking up to what you're looking forward to in high school sports as you move on 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th into the varsity level. So if you get the figures in there, the, the people who were at the top of the chain in the high school, get them to talk to, to the younger athletes in 4th, 5th, or 6th grade. I think that really helps. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge to us adults as well. It really is a challenge as you're serving youth. Again, it's, it's hard to realize the impact that you might be having. You just never know how far reaching it might be. And, uh, you know, it just could be one strong moment can have a fantastic influence or can cause some harm mm -hmm. too. So it's a, it's a real responsibility. Along the lines of responsibility, you mentioned about uh, high school age students mm -hmm. then being models too. Mm -hmm. And I know at McMurray Elementary School and I know in our primary schools too, we really look for opportunities to have our high school uh, athletes or our high school students in general to come and work with our students at that age level, very impressionable. And they really enjoy, not only enjoy, but get a lot from seeing and hearing from and working with the high school students. Have you had, have either of you had an opportunity to work with youth? Actually, I, I, I teach a, uh, a golf clinic for fourth through eighth grade golfers that, that want to come up and, and try and be on the varsity level. And then as far as that goes, um, my brother, who's in fifth grade now, is taking lessons from Pat Russo, who's playing on the soccer team or played on the soccer team here, won a state championship. So that's a, that's a big thing for my brother to look up to him, too, as a, as a role model in high school. So are you feeling the pressure then? Your of big course. brother too. Of course. Right. I have to I have to keep an eye on him. You bet. How about you, Jen? I haven't had any like experiences for myself. Like I used to help with the middle school team, but it just it really does have a huge impact whenever high schoolers come down and help with younger kids. Like they can really see how the game is played and you can teach them like specific stuff that really can just help everyone in the end. So Sometimes it gets repetitive having yeah. having adults teach you the same things over and over and over again. But you, if you get a new face, if you get somebody that maybe you can relate to more as a as a kid, mm -hmm. you're, I mean the same, pretty much the same age group. I mean within five or six years, it goes a long way to get a nice change of scenery. Oh, it's amazing how the adults will say the same things and the children will just kind of blow you off mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then a high school student comes along, and says the same thing, and they're saying, "Oh, really? Is that yeah. true?" <laughs> So it's kind of frustrating for the adults, but we're going to use you to our advantage any way we can. That's good. Well, just from hearing you and what you've learned so far, I, I think you'd be a great asset to, asset to youth in the future. So, okay, thank you. And hope you take advantage of uh, providing the same kind of service that's been provided for you too someday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And in, in terms of the experiences that you've had so far, uh, I know that you're still just in high school, but I know you can look back a little bit. And uh, from your current perspective, can you? Tell us a little bit about what experiences have meant the most to you, maybe for your personal development that you think might serve you best as you grow into uh, an adult. Well, for me, um, for the past four years of lacrosse that I've played, we've gone through like three different coaches in the past four years, which can be really hard because every coach has a different way of looking at the game. And so it's just helped me to learn to deal with new people coming in and being able to relate to them and learning from like what they have to say about lots of different aspects. So for me, it's just been learning to deal with new people as they come in and like getting to know them so you get back into everything. Perseverance, mm -hmm. being resilient, mm -hmm. definitely character builders, yeah. no question. And coaching is a big thing, especially when you get to the high school level because if you don't have a familiar face at the top of, of what they're trying to teach you, then it, it's gonna be kind of hard to relate to what they're saying if you're getting a new face every year to mm -hmm. say that. And, and especially in, in team sports, football, basketball, coaching is a huge thing because you bring up kids from eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade who you try and build to to get into your varsity team and to, to win at the varsity level. I could understand that. And uh, both of you have wonderful careers here and I want to congratulate you, take Thank the you. opportunity to congratulate Thanks. you and hope that championship mm -hmm. comes your way so you don't go downhill. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and I hope you, if, if that would happen to happen, I hope you wouldn't feel bad about anything yeah. that's uh, mm -hmm occurred as a result because you've had a, a great career here. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity for uh, Rich and Michelle just to tell a little bit about the next important steps for your respective programs. Rich? Well one of the things I, 
try to listen to our student athletes here, and, and I think what, what we're hearing too is that there's a degree of continuity that's necessary in coaching. Um, I think we need to understand that as stakeholders in this community that uh, there's a learning curve also for a new coach, or there's a learning curve for someone who's new in the system. I know I feel it myself here as an adult learning a new community as I'm employed here the last 18 months. I think it's vital that people understand that till you learn all the little nuances and some of the things that are expected of you. And I think the athletes feel the same way. So I think we need to allow our new hires and personnel to have time to um, embrace, maybe is the best word, the system and to go through that. Um, that's important. So it tells us a lot by listening to our youth many, many a times. Um, and I like what Michelle said. I know she's extended herself to reach out and I'd like to turn it over to her with things she's done and she's invited our coaches, whether it be the Positive Coaching Alliance or whatever, our people have been invited to things she's done in workshops at the rec center. We just plan to continue to encourage our sports associations to promote a healthy lifestyle, an active lifestyle, to encourage the, the participants to learn and um, most importantly to have fun and in doing so teaching them the importance of sportsmanship. Thank you very much. Sure. Good. And uh, for all of you, I want to thank you for taking the time, for being here out of your busy schedules, to have a positive impact on our youth. And uh, to the community with, from Character Council, I'd just like to extend the message that we are uh, really proud of all the accomplishments and the participation of so many people to help our student athletes, community members in general, have a positive experience through participating in sports. And we hope that for everyone, all of our efforts go forward and help our youth to grow to live a life of significance to go along with their success on the field. On behalf of everyone working with Character Counts, thank you very much. Hello, I'm Bob Fredo, and I'm happy to be hosting today's program on sportsmanship and character development. And I'm representing the Peters Township Character Counts Initiative, which is a broad-based community effort to coordinate many activities that will help to enhance character development in our community. Happy to say that we have a number of community groups who are working hand-in-hand -hand for this effort, including the school district, the municipality, the Chamber of Commerce, Rotary, the PTAs, and many other groups, including the Peters Township Ministerium. Today's program will include a few panelists, and I'm happy to introduce them today as well. We have Rich Relic, our athletic director at the high school, Grant Burkhart, senior, PTHS, and also a senior, Jen Doran. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. I'd like to start off with the head administrator for the sports and activities programs here, Mr. Relic. Uh, it would be helpful if you just start us off by discussing your vision and philosophy for the interscholastic, interscholastic program. Well, I, I think one of the things we try to do here at, at Peters Township in our school district is make sure that, uh, that our activities support the academic mission of the, of the schools. And whether it be our strategic plan or the goals and missions we have for our school district, we hope they coincide with what we do athletically. Um, we think... Uh, from the athletic administration perspective that activities are inherently educational and I think that's important because I think there's a wide variety of difference between um, let's say uh, 
non-school sports and sports that are done through AAU programs or pay for play or perhaps a different type of mission and development for those programs than what we have here at school. And also we feel that the activities and participation in such activities really foster success for kids later in life, not just in athletics. So that's one thing I think we're very proud of here, uh, Dr. Fredo, is that our goals, our mission, our strategic plan uh, dovetails or is coincidental with what we do in the district. I'd just like to comment that uh, some people may remember that I worked at the high school a number of years ago and been involved with character counts for a number of years. And uh, I'd like to say that it's just great that this is something that we can continue to build upon. I know you're still relatively new here and you've already taken some steps and you're very respectful of what's been done in the past uh, with Mr. Mays being the administrator, Dr. Hages being the former principal, Mr. Englert, and many other people have contributed to this, including the past coaches. So really have a great opportunity to uh, build upon what has already been done in this area. Absolutely. And so it's important what the adults think and uh, we like to think we might have something to do with any good things that go on, but it's really important to know what the student athletes who are really participating in the recipients of our administration and coaching, uh, what they think. So uh, Jen and Grant would like for you to tell us a little bit about maybe some of the things that have really had the most impact on your character development, just positive things that have occurred that you feel have shaped uh, your, your personality makeup, the things that you believe in, and helped you to be successful, because I know both of you have had a lot of success, too, mm -hmm. in terms of winning. Um, probably for me, it's been my parents and coaches. They just always pushed me to, like, whenever I'm playing, to give respect to the refs, other teammates, the people we're playing against, because you're, like, not only representing yourself, but the school and the people that you play for. So by playing well and being good sportsmanship to other people, you're just really representing yourself and the school and the people who work for the school. Yeah, and kind of like what she goes along with there is that you can't really underestimate how much the parents and the coaches have that input into what their team and their players mm -hmm. and who they're trying to coach, um, how much they, they need to respect everybody that's working to make the game exactly what mm -hmm. it should be. That's a big, that's a pretty big deal in high school sports. Yeah. Have you ever had it sometimes that where it's been really challenging to mm -hmm. really live up to those mm -hmm. ideals that uh, you know you have in your heart and you know mm -hmm. that your coaches and parents want you to live up no, to? I think I'd be lying if I said yeah. I didn't. But Especially big yeah. rival teams. Yeah. Like yes. You want to get out there, you want to play, you want to win, but you still have to keep your cool and know that mm -hmm. you can't just go out there and beat people up while you're playing. <laughs> like You have to like know the rules and know what you're doing. It's a little easier when things are going well yeah exactly. and you're celebrating the victory mm -hmm. accepting defeat is, is part of that too yeah. you yeah. had some experiences where you maybe handled some things a little differently mm -hmm. you know, looking back on it yeah that's a big thing too is if you can keep your cool when you're winning as much as you can when you're losing mm -hmm. that's the even the even temperaments it's very very good well i mm -hmm. can tell you for sure that that trait and that skill will uh, really serve you well mm -hmm. as you go through because through life, we certainly face a lot of disappointments, and some things are very important to us, mm -hmm. too. So keeping your poise under pressure in an emotionally charged environment is absolutely yeah. cr critical. Mm -hmm. I think from, from what you were saying, I, I, what I was interpreting from what you were saying is that the, uh, the need for positive role modeling from mm -hmm. adults shouldn't be something that we take for granted as adults, whether we're the parents or we are rec coaches or mm -hmm. we're interscholastic coaches or teachers, whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big thing because as, especially when you're coming up through the grades in fourth grade to eighth grade before we get into high school sports, you don't really have anybody else to look up to besides your parents and your coaches. Mm -hmm. So the, the value that, that, we, that we stress on, on parents and coaches being positive role models for, for us as, as young athletes, I guess, is, is, a, is a very big thing. And I think mm -hmm. they do a pretty good job. And uh, Rich, as a sports program administrator, you are in charge of administering the programs, but also selecting and supervising coaches. And let's face it, things can get pretty competitive, and uh, winning is important. That's part of what we're trying to do to have success. Um, what kind of struggles do you see that some of the coaches might have in terms of balancing that desire to win and also making sure that we're keeping the best interest of everyone at heart? In in the competitive environment. I think that maybe is what separates us as a educationally founded sports program from the others I mentioned. I think we are very interested in our students' total development, not just the win-loss uh, 
success ratio, which kids kids will.